two videos in one week yeah let's do this the first thing I did was make some new templates for the carbon fiber that goes over the wing the original kit came with just the wing part I one up that and I did the little splitter of things on the edges. You've already seen me apply them once a few videos ago, so I'm not going to waste your time again. I'm going to move straight on to the fog lights here. And I'm just going to use a Molotel chrome pen to replicate the light that's actually down inside the housing. I'm not going to use any glue or anything to hold these in. I just don't sand the edges and I force them down in with a friction fit. Now the actual part that is the headlight actually just pops right into the housing very easily. I got a bit ahead of myself here and went to tear them apart and realized that they do not disassemble as easily as they went together. So I got to look into the box here and the actual car on the box art has the daytime running lights on. Since I never build dynamic kits, so to speak, they're all just kind of, you know, just sitting there, not running. So I did not do the daytime running lights. However, while I was looking at the box art here, I realized all those housings are carbon fiber. And I have a whole lot of carbon fiber scraps sitting around, so hey, let's do that. So I got kind of our general shape going, just using my fingers to press it all into place. And from there, I'm just gonna use a very sharp blade to trim off all the excess. And from there, I just fold it all over onto itself that just keeps it from peeling off later. And from here, I'm going to go back to that super sharp blade that I have. I'm going to do a little tiny slit in each of the corners. And I'm just going to connect them so they create an X. Then with a super wet brush, I'm just going to push it in and let it all open up. Once I got everything right where I wanted it to be and looking how I want it to look, I just hit it with a blow dryer and it dries out the decal and helps it set better. Oh yeah, check this out. One of the reasons it took so long to get this entire kit build wrapped up and all these videos out is I had to do a bit of surgery to my car. This is the lower control arm bushing and it is the heart of my entire front suspension. Apparently, this needed replacing. 
Anywho, back to the kit. And for some reason, I struggled to get these into place. And once I got them, I felt really stupid. That little lip right there, well, that falls into place and is a perfect match for the lip on the body. Like a glove. Another problem, and well, they did this before on the decals, is they had the left side confused with the right side. So once you figure out that they're crisscrossed, they fall right into place. That is totally my bad. Here I was trying to be proper and follow the instructions, and they were wrong. Once all the decals for the headlight and the fog light bucket set, I just hit them with that same semi-gloss clear that I used on the interior and the bottom of the chassis pan. Now, I will tell you that this did not do a whole lot because once it's assembled, you can't even tell that I have carbon fiber on it. So unless you got a bunch of scrap carbon fiber just kicking around, don't waste your time on this step. Aside from that though, the headlight buckets, the fog lights, the tail lights, all of those fell into place and actually snapped together and held themselves in place so I could add glue. This thing's kind of a pain to put in because it is perfectly round and the body's a bit contoured, so. I don't know who thought this was a good idea. So just like most of the lenses I do, I will just go around the edge with a black sharpie that simulates the rubber seal that keeps everything weather tight. Then I just lock it all into place with that UV resin that I always use on my clear parts. And a piece of tape cut off the transition between the tail light and reverse light. Then I just filled it all in with a red sharpie. This UV light does indeed penetrate to any color that we add, it just takes a bit more burn time. So I'll just skip ahead here. I've done the headlights, both tail lights, and the fog lights all in that same manner. As far as the griddle goes, the kit came with some photo etch, however I cannot use it. As you can see, this barely fits in there. For the photo etch, I kind of had to squish the body just to get it even to touch. So that was a no-go because I didn't want to distort the body and it was too small. If you remember during the unboxing, the kit came with decals for the black around the edges of the windows. 
I, uh, I don't know, I didn't trust them, so I just painted them. As you saw me point out earlier, the bottom edge was not as crisp as it could have been and it wasn't exactly straight. Yeah, this edge down here. I'm just going to fill that in with a sharpie. If you do very small amounts and very minor touch-ups with this, it will blend in and nobody will know the difference. You guys may have seen this tip before, but I will share it every time. If you have a part break like this while it's still attached to the sprue, just leave it there and use it as kind of a jig to hold everything in place while you glue it back together. It works every time. Now these parts, I don't know what they are. They get painted red and they fit down inside the cow part of the windshield and they're raised a bit so they were very difficult to install. I didn't realize it at the time, but they're also kind of triangle shaped. That keeps them kind of straight and pointing the way they're supposed to be pointing. So do not just try to force them in like I did. Now, there wasn't much room to get the UV resin in where I wanted it to go, so I'm just going to use some good old-fashioned Bob Smith Industries Super Gold Plus to glue in all these clear parts. Those of you for not familiar, the Super Gold Plus is a super glue. However, it's fume-free, so it will not fog your clear parts. And you people who like to do cosplay, you could use it on foam and it will not melt it. Now on the downside of all that, it is still a super glue. If you glob it on, it will hurt your paint and it will still hurt your clear. So a little bit of it goes a very long way. Don't be stupid with this stuff. So it's just a little bit, just to hold the parts in is all you need. The windshield wiper goes in before you install the windshield, otherwise you will not have room to install it. A little pin that fits down in the windshield, it's at an angle, so whenever you turn the windshield wiper itself into place, it kind of torques it down into the window to keep it setting flat. That's a great design, and I wish more kids did that. but I was not thinking ahead and I didn't have any glue containers open. You just put your little dab right there and right there. And it'll hold that windshield in just fine. And with the windshield glued into place securely, we can start adding all the decals that go on the windows. I didn't realize it at the time, but the car's number is actually on this decal. By the time I realized it, I had to do a double take just to make sure I had the right number. I was not paying attention and I got lucky.
you glue this in like I did, just make sure all that's at a 90 degree angle. Otherwise this part will not sit flush. And now for the hardest part of the whole build, the instructions make it look like the body just slides in from the top. If you do that, you're going to bust loose these exhaust pieces like I did. Now that could just be bad instructions, or it could be the fact that I have had seven of these. So who knows what the actual problem is. And it took a whole lot of trial and error, but I kind of figured out a way to hook the exhaust through the opening in the back and just kind of have everything fall into place. It was still not easy. It took a whole lot of pulling and popping and pinching and squeezing, but finally everything just kind of popped into place. These front wheels just might as well be fixed into place. Not a lot of room to turn them. Notice how thick these uprights are for the wing. The photo edge piece is dramatically thinner and I wished I had caught this earlier but I was not paying attention. so much wiggle room in there and these pieces just do not fit. If I'd cut this earlier I would have filled in a lot of that hole with some body filler but at this point all I could do is just install the factory pieces. This took several, several attempts, but I eventually got it. Now I had a similar experience trying to fit the mirrors, so watch me struggle here. I'm not going to waste your time watching me install the mirrors. That's it though guys, just wipe all the fingerprints off and get ready for the final show off. And I just realized that I did not put that antenna on. Wow. That wraps up this kit. Aside from the clear, which was totally my fault, this was a total pleasure to build, and everything fit the way it should. Thank you so much for watching.